Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Jeremy Leffler, and I work in the Policy Office in the Division of Institution and Award Support at the National Science Foundation. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today to the Fall 2024 NSF Virtual Grants Conference. And I am now pleased uh, to uh, present this session, which will cover an introduction and an overview of the National Science Foundation. Hello and welcome to this introduction to the National Science Foundation. This presentation is designed to give you an overview of NSF, our organization, and our budget outlook. The information I provide to you today will help put many of the other conference sessions that you attend into context. My name is Dr. Kadir Dantro, and I am the Division Director for the Division of Institution and Award Support in the Office of Budget, Finance, and Award Management, commonly referred to as BFA. BFA has many responsibilities from implementing policies and procedures for the entire proposal and award life cycle to making all of the awards to your organization. I'm going to talk about NSF as an organization. I'm gonna provide some budget information and funding trend. And I'll also provide you some links to key documents. As you attend other sessions throughout the week, I encourage you to ask your questions early and often. NSF was established by Congress in the National Science Foundation Act of 1950. As an agency, our mission, according to the act, is to promote the progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity, and welfare, and to secure the national defense. And we do that by supporting investments across the wide range of science and engineering areas. Let me provide a high level overview of NSF. NSF is an independent agency. This means that NSF is outside of the cabinet agencies. NSF supports fundamental basic research and education in all the non-medical fields of science and engineering. Our governance is a national science board. The members of the board are appointed by the president and it includes 25 members, including the NSF director. It's a very important aspect of NSF being an independent agency. The NSB has two roles. It establishes the policies of NSF within the framework of applicable national policies set forth by the president and Congress. And it does this by identifying issues that are critical to NSF's future, approves NSF, NSF's strategic budget directions and the annual budget submission to the Office of Management and Budget, and approves new major programs and awards. In addition, the NSB serves as advisors to the President and Congress on matters related to science and engineering and education in science and engineering. In addition, NSF has a special hiring authority to bring Intergovernmental Personnel Act employees or rotators from the research community into NSF on a temporary basis. This keeps NSF connected to the communities that we serve and ensures that we have new, fresh voices coming into the foundation. Most of the awards that NSF makes go out as grants. However, we also award cooperative agreements, contracts, and fellowships. NSF is divided into eight directorates that support science and engineering research and education. We also have an international office to coordinate international engagement and collaboration, as well as an office of integrated activities that manages large cross directorate and agency-wide programs, such as the established program to simulate competitive research or referred to as EPSCOR. The Office of Budget, Finance and Award Management, where my organization is housed and the Office of Information and Resource Management both ensure that the agency's operations are running smoothly. 
The NSF's director's office also houses the Office of Equity and Civil Rights, or OECR, which works across the NSF-supported community to eliminate harassment and prom promote diversity, inclusion, equal opportunity, and access. And the Office of the Chief of Research, Security Strategy, and Policy, commonly referred to as OCRIS which coordinates on research security issues, both within and outside NSF. The numbers on this slide are based on fiscal year 2024 actuals. In 2024, NSF supported about 1,900 organizations and over 358,000 people. We received about 40,000 proposals in 24, and we selected over 11,000 for funding. This means that we declined about 29,000 proposals. Many of them passed over due to a lack of funds rather than merit. Awards are determined through a merit review process, regarded throughout the world as the unequal standard of scientific review. It relies on expertise of accomplished scientists to ensure that all NSF projects are the highest quality and have the potential to advance the frontiers of knowledge and transform our world. In fact, at the last count, NSF supported researchers have received 268 Nobel Prizes. Although NSF invested in all of those laureates' basic research long before they were recognized by the Nobel Committee. This slide shows NSF's support of academic basic research. Only basic research, only in academic institutions, and only federal funds. As you can see, NSF is a major federal funding source for academic basic research. In the case of computer science funding, almost 80% of federal support comes from NSF, although many government organizations work to ensure that the U.S. leads in research and innovation. NSF is a major funder of institutions of higher education in many critical fields, ensuring that crucial research areas continue to grow, furthering the nation's leadership. The fiscal year 2025 budget request totals more than $10 billion. You can take a deeper dive into the NSF budget on our website, but I want to take the opportunity to speak briefly about NSF leadership when it comes to science funding at the federal level. If the U.S. wants to continue to lead in research and innovation, we need to invest in both fundamental research and translation. We need to create the technologies and jobs of the future through such investments. We also need to ensure that we have a workforce, a broad workforce, that is prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Many of you may know about the Chips and Science Act, which NSF believes can unlock science and technology breakthroughs to drive our economy and national security for decades to come by expanding the geography of innovation through regional innovation, investing in domestic STEM talent like never before, strengthening the lab to market pipeline, and increasing funding for the basic science and research that lays the foundation for the future. Now for a few more specifics about the NSF 2025 budget request. NSF has six separate appropriation accounts that you see on this slide. The majority of the funding is in the research and related activities account. The programs funded by the STEM Education Directorate, or EDU, have a separate appropriations account. There are also separate appropriation accounts for major research equipment and facilities, agency operations and award management that fund salaries, systems travel and conferences, things of that nature, and the Office of the Inspector General and the National Science Board have separate appropriations. What you're seeing is, one, the current plan for fiscal 24, two, the request for fiscal year 25, and three, 
the House and Senate marks for fiscal year 2025. The final appropriation often falls within the House and Senate marks, but many factors can impact those decisions, such as a change in administration. As such, the amount and timing of the FY25 appropriation is uncertain. NSF sent its 2025 budget request to Congress in March of this year. NSF and other federal agencies are currently being funded via a continuing resolution or CR through December 20th of this year. The school year 2025 funding will become available after an appropriation has been enacted. This slide shows the number of days it's taken each year before NSF receives its full appropriation. In the last 30 years, since 1994, there have only been two years where we began our fiscal year with a full year appropriation. In fiscal year 2024, we were under a continuing resolution for 157 days. Since 1994, the average number of days before receipt of appropriation is 97. Since 2016, the average number of days is 130. This means that we work through about half of the fiscal year operating at our prior year's funding level. That also means we have a lot of work to do between when the NSF receives its appropriation and the end of each fiscal year to get all of those funds aborted. Now that we've talked about all the funding, what are your chances of getting funded? Well, on this slide, I've provided the last five years of the number of proposals that we've received and those that we were able to fund. You can see that it's a range between 26 to 29 percent. In fiscal year 2024, we were at the bottom of that range, or 26 percent. Many factors contribute to this, and you should also know that the success rate varies significantly across NSF by directorate and by program. But again, it does drive home the impact of what I stated earlier. NSF is only able to fund about a quarter of the proposals that we receive, and that for many of them, it's not due to them lacking merit, but that we have limited funding to support the good ideas coming into the agency. For the last several slides, I've been talking mostly about what happens on an annual basis. However, NSF is actually managing an award portfolio that spans multiple years. What that translates to is a portfolio that's over $39 billion in total award funding, 46,000 active awards, and over 3,300 awardees. When it comes to award oversight, many of the people who you'll be hearing from throughout the grants conference are working on the items listed in this box on the right side of the slide. It shows the activities that NSF is engaged in with our awardees throughout the life cycle. This includes pre-award reviews all the way through audit resolution. And if you have questions, there are people here who can help answer them for you. There are several resources for you on this slide, many of which I've touched upon today, and many of which you'll hear mentioned as you attend other sessions throughout the conference. Whether you have questions during this conference or later, we are available to get your questions answered. Ask us early and often while attending this conference. And ask us early and often after you leave. NSF staff contact information is available on the NSF website at nsf.gov. I also want to point out that NSF is always looking for rotators to join the foundation and contribute to the progress of science. Information about those and other career opportunities are available online at new.nsf.gov careers forward slash rotator programs. The hyperlink is provided here. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing from you.